Welcome to the With Winning in Mind podcast. I'm Heather Sumlin, and today we have Troy Basham with me as always, and then we brought our father here, Lanny Basham. He's the author of With Winning in Mind, as well as Parenting Champions, and today we're going to focus on Parenting Champions, learning a little bit more about why did he write the book and what can parents learn from him that would help their kids be more successful. Okay, Dad, tell us a little bit about where parenting champions, the concept and the idea for parenting champions came from. Well, actually, we've been working with coaches for for quite a long time. We've we've been doing uh, classes for coaches and empowering coaches and so forth. And and we realized that that the the mental game there's a great a big need for for coaches to know about about mental performance and as as we were beginning to teach coaches a lot of them uh teach youth and um and we taught high school coaches and people like that and uh, we realized that that there's a there's sometimes there's a disconnect between what we teach and and what the parents reinforce and so, so our, as, as we began to teach younger, younger performers, we decided that, that uh, made a long decision a long time ago, that, that, that if, if the athlete didn't drive themselves to, the, uh, uh, to, to, to our offices to, to get training, that we would, uh, uh, we would have the parents in the class. And so what ended up happening is we ended up teaching the parents at the same time that we teach, we teach the kids. And, and we saw eyes open and the parents go, oh, my gosh, I, 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 I've, got to, I've got to do something different and, and so forth. And, so, uh, and that pretty much uh, started uh, getting to me as, as realizing that everybody that takes training from us always says the same thing, that I wish I'd known this sooner. Well, when is sooner? <laughs> As sooner is when kids are still at home and uh, and so forth. And and I I discovered that um, uh, we say this all the time that you talk to any elite performer uh, in any sport, uh, PJ Tour player, Olympic athlete, anybody that's really good at what they do, what percentage of what you do is mental, and you get a big number back. Uh, the number I get most often is, uh, is my sport's 90% mental. Well, if the sport is 90% mental, uh, where, where are the mental coaches or where, where are the classes that teach that? Uh, you know, you can go to any school, and we're basically talking uh, uh, in parenting championship to, to parents who have children that compete, and they so they're still living at home. Well, where are the mental coaches? I mean, they're, they're, every school has, and every sport has technical coaches. Uh, you know, from football, basketball, baseball, track, whatever it is, they've all got technical coaches. They're bound. You'd be, you'd be hard pressed to find a mental coach. And or a class? Did you take a class in how to think in school? I, I, I didn't, and and so you 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 would think that there are no mental coaches out there, and and if if this is the most important thing, why is it ignored? And uh, uh, but you'd be mistaken because the there are mental coaches everywhere. As a matter of fact, the most important mental coach that a child will ever have is the parent driving them home from the game. But they're not really trained in that role. Or, and, and so I just decided that I can't do everything, but I can do something. And so that's why uh, Parenting Champions was written, to, to be able to empower parents on some, some of the techniques that we have discovered that can help build self-image in, in, in children and help them reach their potential. Because we define winning here as reaching the top of your potential. And potential is different for, for each person. But to reach the top of their potential, they have to know what winners know. And I just don't think parents are, are as, as knowledgeable about this as they could be and that's why with winning in mind uh, gave me a, an opportunity to help athletes and parenting champions is written specifically to help parents yeah i don't think parents understand how performance is generated athletes don't that's why with winning mind is so powerful 
because you're talking about this is how performance is generated, the relationship between the conscious mind, your thoughts, subconscious, your skill, and self-image, which is your habits and attitudes. Parenting Champions takes that one step further and says, hey, look, not only do you need to know this, but here are some key principles to help your athletes and how you need to communicate with them for from a parent perspective. But also the parent, I think, doesn't realize they are the mental coach from day one. And I always talk about building self-image in a warranted way. It's like you want to give praise when it's warranted, not just give praise to give praise. And when a kid fails, you want to have a learning moment there, not just have them complain about why they failed. And so when you look at how parents talk to their kids, what do you think some of the key things they need to do that you don't see enough of when you see them communicating after the event with their athlete? Well, I think it starts with understanding. uh, I open the the book with this question. uh, What's more important to you as a parent? What your children accomplish or who they become? And I've never had a parent yet that didn't say who they become is more important than what they accomplish. And I think that's that's interesting because the the world, the culture that your kids live in, we all live in, uh, they reward accomplishment, not who they are, and not not becoming. They don't because accomplishment is easy to measure. It always has a number associated with it. It's A B C D F in school. It's first, second, third on the uh, on, on 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 the leaderboard. It's gold, silver, bronze in Olympics. It's you know it's 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 first chair violin in the school band. You know it it it's. Uh, it's how much money you make. I mean, all of that is measurable, and anything that can be measurable can can you can reward uh, excellence based on well, you 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 do get the highest number of points, and then we recognize you as being really good at this. And so the the culture all automatically rewards accomplishment, but becoming is really hard to put a value on it. Becoming is who you are. It's character. It's it's trustworthiness. It's a, you know are are you are you a, a person of your word? It's character. It's it's the kind of things that are really important to parents, but the world doesn't reward that 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 type of behavior uh, uh, by, with giving an award. You don't go to a t- competition and say, okay, uh, this is the person that has, that has the most confidence. Well, how do you measure confidence, you know? And, and this is the person that learned the most. And so parents uh, uh, don't really know how to, how do I, how do I build self-image? This is, how do I build, the, how do I get my children empowered to be able to have the uh, self-image that uh, that is productive, that they can use in sport and in and in academics and in any in, in any as- aspect of their life. How do they do that? And in order to be able to do that, you need to understand this concept of self-image. Just like Troy said, that performance. We've discovered that performance is a function of three mental processes. The conscious mind, what you think about, your thoughts, either helpful and harmful thoughts, and then skills, the subconscious is the skills. But self-image, self-image is, is, the, is, is the becoming side. Of, this is who you are. This is your habits and your attitudes. Uh, when I was in Boy Scouts, we learned the Boy Scout law. Trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Who, what parent wouldn't want a kid that like, like that, you know? And the Boy Scouts uh, uh, lays it all out in the Boy Scout law. So that was uh, uh, an attempt to try to, try, try to help, help people. Well, we study self-image uh, in depth in mental management, and so there are a lot of things that parents can do to help build self-image in, in their kids. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. One of the worst things that a parent can say to one of their kids when they come in from a game, like say they're 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 on, they're they're playing soccer, and most most of us, uh, you guys play soccer, right? And so we came to the games, and and there's a conversation. 
that parents have uh, uh, when you're on the drive home. It's one of the worst things a parent can say to their kids uh, when the kid's talking about how they performed in whatever sport it is that they're doing is, how did you do? And the reason that, and you might say, oh, well, what's wrong with that? You know, and, and I would pretty much guarantee that most parents probably say something like that to the kids. Is that how did you do is an open-ended question. It could be answered uh, uh, positively, negatively. Unfortunately, we live in a negatively charged culture. In other words, it is uh, m more common that when you ask a question like that for people to talk about what they did wrong instead of what they did right. And so a better question to ask, what we want them to do is to reinforce what they did right so that the self-image gets an imprint because every time you think about, talk about, write about something, you become that. And so we want them to imprint what they did well first. And so a better question to ask, it would be, what did you do well? Or let's talk about what, what, what did you enjoy? Some, some question like that that narrows it down to where we're going to talk about what they did right. Because they always do some, something right. Let's don't focus on, the, on what went wrong at all. Let's talk, let's talk about what, what they did right. And then the, we have what we call three magic questions. That's the first one. Parents should, should talk about what they did right. Secondly, is what did you learn? The most important thing I, I think that I can give uh, parents is helping their children respond appropriately to what happened. Learning how to praise themselves and recognize when they do things right so that you do them right more often and be able to learn from the mistakes that they make instead of beating themselves up. In other words, what's this teaching me instead of there's something wrong with me? I didn't, I didn't do this, so there's something wrong with me. That's a big problem in the world. And the way to do that is when you ask the second question, when you say, you know, what did you learn? You, you take the, the object of, of their performance away from, uh, well, I'm, 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 a, I'm a good person when I do well, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a nobody or I'm a bad person when I do poor, and away from that, and you, and you focus it on, oh, uh, well, I'm, I made a mistake, let's learn from it. And that's where, where you want to go. You want to talk about what you learned from that error. And once you, once you do that, you, the third question is just an automatic, is, well, what are you going to do about it? You know, it, this is going to build you. You're going to learn from your mistakes. And by learning from your mistakes, uh, you're going to do better next time. That's, that's the, uh, uh, the most important thing is learning how to respond because I think most people are still in the reaction mode of, with what happens to them in life is that when things go good, uh, they're happy. When things go, go bad, uh, they're not happy. And, and they, uh, they go into the blame game and a lot of times they blame themselves. Because it's easy to do, right? It's easy to do the blame game. But you always say, is something happening to you or for you? And in this three-step question, the second one is what you learn, I think is an opportunity of this happened for you, for your benefit. So we we have an interesting situation because of the three of us, one of us still has a kid that they talk to a lot after events. Mm -hmm. Your your daughter competes in cheer. She's going to school. She's yeah. you know a teenager. She's still so, listening a little bit. Yes, maybe, maybe. <laughs> so... Heather, give us an example of what what Landy's telling us here, because I think you could give us a personal example of that. Because you go from cheer practice home, and you talk to Ashley a lot. What's those conversations like that you think could help people who are listening? So I feel like Ashley's been a little bit conditioned because she is very good at this. She is very good at when she gets in the car, she focuses on more of the positives than the negatives. So 
today it's a much better conversation. And sometimes it's not talking about cheer at all. What I've noticed is if she had a bad practice, so back when she was doing competitive cheer, if she had a bad practice and it just didn't go quite the way she would have liked for it to or she struggled, she would get in the car and I could usually tell, and, well, A, maybe I watched, and or I could just tell by her body language it's not going to be a productive conversation. And so sometimes I would ask her, well, so what did you enjoy? And she goes, I enjoyed the fact that I am now in the car. And that's what I would get. I'm like, okay, so then I would know this conversation, she's already stopped. She already let go of it. I know my kid. But when she gets in the car and she's able to really have a conversation, she can talk through, I had a really great practice today. Nowadays she gets in the car, she goes, I had a great tumble day. I was able to do this and this and this. And I felt really good about that. I'm totally going to throw that at tryouts. Tryouts are coming up for her. So I'm going to throw this skill at tryouts because I have it. But the times when she gets in the car and I know it wasn't a great practice and she doesn't want to talk to me about it, I've given her the space for a minute. Is that okay to do? Because I want to make sure I'm actually doing that right. I want her to talk about what went well. I want to be able to talk about what she learned. I want her to be able to let it go and move forward. But she might be too emotional right out of practice is can I take space or should I do it right away? Oh, you're talking about girls. <laughs> uh, because there's, there's, there's this struggle sometimes with mom and daughter. There's this struggle. And if I try to make her like have that conversation when she's not ready for it, sometimes I get a little bit of a, let's just say there's conflict. And so instead, what I found is I still want to have that conversation, but to give her a chance to kind of unwind, put on her favorite song, and then on the way home, at when I can tell she's kind of let go of some things, then I'll say, okay, so I may jump. I, I may ask her, what did, you, what did you like? What was your favorite part of practice? And if she says getting in the car, heading home, then it's, okay, did you learn anything that was valuable? Like, what did you learn that was valuable? And then she'll say, yes, I did. I learned this and this and this, but I do not want to talk about it. So then I know she doesn't want to talk about it. Is that well, okay? Here's, here's, the, here's the, the, the bottom line here is that don't ask her first thing she gets in the car, um, how did you do? Because if she had a day like that, she's probably going to talk about what she did wrong first. Yeah, I don't ask her that. Okay, question. you don't do that. Mm -mm. Okay, the second thing is you need to talk, you need to get her thinking and talking about something that that keeps her from from reinforcing a bad experience in in training. Mm -hmm. If you can, if you can go, if you can pivot straight to uh, what did you learn? Uh, or and if you need a break, I I'm, I'm, I I understand what what you're saying with with that. I think that's that uh, that's fine. At least you're guiding as a as a parent. You're you're understanding that that every time your children think talk about a problem, their mm -hmm. self image shrinks. And you don't want that. You want their self-image to grow. You want you want because the 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 better the self-image, the the better the probability they're going to reach the their potential. And and reaching the top of their potential is, is parents' job one. I will do this if I know it's been a rough practice, and but I've watched it. Then I will let her know what I saw that was good, what I liked about what I felt like she did really well in practice, and then that usually helps. So, so what you want to see happen is, is you, want, you want to talk about the solution of the problem. Every time you talk about the solution, or they can talk, gosh, if you can get them to talk about the solution, yeah. that's great, is that, that your self-image grows every time you're mm -hmm. talking about the solution. Every time you're talking about the problem, the self-image shrinks. I think a lot of times, I, I'll, I'll give you another example. This is kind of an extreme example, but, but uh, okay, uh, this is not you now. This is, <laughs> this is somebody. But but uh, uh, report cards come in, and 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 a parents uh, discussing a report card with their with their with their child, and 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 a parent says says uh, well, well uh, let uh, now last uh, grading period uh, you you made an A in this class, and th this grading period you went you you got a C, uh, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Now you 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 totally took the conversation to to uh, talking about the problem, you know, and and uh, I, and that that can cause the. Uh, so what are they going to say? They're gonna, they're going they're going to say, well, I don't know what, what and they're probably going to say, I don't know. And then and then a parent could could do this could say, well, did, did you not do your homework? Did you not pay any attention to the class? Have you been spending too much time with a, with your your girlfriend or boyfriend? Are are you are you are you in too much social activities? I mean, you're talking about all of these problems, potential problems, and 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 you're not listening. You're talking and and. Uh, but you're 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 tearing that self-image down. The parents trying to help, and and you're trying. And you say, "Well, I'm gonna, I got to know what the problem is for in order to have a solution." Well, um, uh, you're creating some problems for the self-image when 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 you talk like that. So uh, there's there's a better way. There's a better way to 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 do that. What do you, how about asking this question? Um, What what do you think you need to do mm-hmm. to bring that grade up next time? I remember Troy did an interview once on it was a it was it was a talk show and I don't remember which one it was, but you were interviewed about how to communicate as a parent. And you said replace but with what? Where, oh, you got this A, you got this B, you got this but what about the C? But, but what happened here? But what? And then you said replace it with what? Um, what are you going to do? You know, what are your ideas to, to bring it up? What are your what are your goals? What are your do you remember that? Yeah, I think it's cool. interesting. You, you mentioned the report card. I remember years ago when Tori was in middle school. Mm-hmm. She both my kids struggle getting A's and, and B's because they take after me and the dyslexia thing in the family runs in the gene and they have that gene. And, <laughs> but Tori really through a period of time was like, I want to get A's and B's. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have any C's on my report card. So she studied really, really hard, came home with a report card. She had three A's, a couple B's, but she had a C. And she was so devastated because she worked so hard and she didn't get A's and B's. So she failed to reach her goal. She was focusing so much on the failure of the goal. When I saw the report card, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Well, she's never had three A's ever on a single report card up until this point. If you had one A, you were, you were happy, right? She had three, and she was focusing on the one C instead of the three A's. And so I just redirected and said, go, look at this. And she goes, what? I go, you have three A's. Mm-hmm. When's the last time you had three A's on a report card? She goes, well, I've never had. I said, why don't we focus on that? And so we started talking about how she got those three A's. And then I said, what if we did that mm-hmm. with this class? Mm-hmm. And it was a class that she had the C, C on. And so then that motivated her, okay, I'm going to do that and move, move forward and strive to do that. But you're talking about solutions in that regard rather than the, the problem. I've learned this with, with teenagers over the last 30 years working with teenagers. One, what they consider a bad day is often not as bad as they think it is. Right. And and two, because of that, there's usually something that went well that they've overlooked. So when they get in the car and they go, oh, I'm just I'm happy it's over. That's the attitude. Usually there's something, okay, what's the one thing happened that was good? And this is why I like sports like golf, because there's so many variables, it's almost impossible for something not to go well. Like cheer, how many different routines are they going through? How many different skill sets do they have in one little floor exercise? Mm-hmm. So much that it's probably impossible that one, one skill set, you know, There's was always good. some success. Yeah, there's always Absolutely. one that was good. And you're like, okay, well, and if you're watching them, you can, you know, hit on that. So, well, you know, I was watching you, you were doing this really good. And they try to downplay it. Yeah, but that's the only thing. I said, well, let's talk about that. And then you can blend that into the learning moment. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, what if we took that same attitude approach in these other assets, uh, factors of what you're you're doing and create those liabilities and turn them into assets? I think that is a much better approach. And I believe that's what you're you're accomplishing with Parenting Champions. One thing I want to do is we, we talked a while back about Parents being responsible of, of building their kids up. But you bring into and one of the ways that Parenting Champions is different than With Winning Mind. I think some people think Parenting Champions is With Winning Mind written for parents. To some degree, that's true. But 
you go into a different direction where you talk about these readiness factors, which, okay, what if your kid is is not willing to do something and not able to do something, but you think they should do it? What do you do? And you kind of guide them through the readiness factors. Can you explain why that's important for parents to understand and and help guide their, their young athletes? So the, the, the purpose of talking about readiness factors is to, to, to let parents know that their children uh, are in one of four readiness factors at any moment concerning any task. That, that uh, these four readiness factors, it's easy to put your kids in one of those four readiness factors. Uh, the first one is, um, uh, I don't know it's important and I don't know how to do it. Okay, that's that we call that a readiness factor one. Okay, uh, the second one is I I recognize that's important, but I don't know how to, I still don't know how to do it. Okay, the third one is I know how to do it, but I'm not doing it anymore. You know, I need to do it, but I'm not doing it anymore. And the fourth one is I know it's important, and I'm doing it. Okay. Okay, so so you could you could. How take, many parents so, wish their kid was the fourth one all, <laughs> all the, time. the time? Sure. All well, the time. well, I mean, one of the reasons why why they might, might might be is because there are also four coaching processes that parents need to parent. You first thing that you need to do as a parent parents is to realize that you're a performance coach. Okay, you may not have thought thought about that, but you are twenty four seven a performance coach to your to to your kids, and you better know that there are four coaching processes, and the 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 teaching point here is that parents sometimes don't use the appropriate coaching process for the readiness factor that their kids are in. For example, let's say that these coaching processes are. The first one is informing. Okay, if you're an R1, you don't know what's important, you don't know how to do it, you, the, inform. The parents need to tell them, here's, wh- you, here's what you need to do. You're talking about what. You're, te- you're telling them what they should do. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. We, we teach people how to keep a performance journal, okay? Okay. Right. And uh, so if pe- people are not keeping a performance journal, they don't know that it's important, well, the coaching process is, I need to t- tell you what to do. Like, uh, I need to tell you why it's important and, all, and, and, and so forth. But, but, but uh, you, you talk about the performance journal, okay? Tell them what, what to do. The second one is, okay, you, you, they, they, they realize that, uh, uh, that they think it's important, but they still don't know how to do it. Well, the second coaching process is teaching. So parents inform and, and parents teach. Okay, let me, let me show you how to do that. Okay, this is how, this is how you do it. And, and then, okay, so, so I know how to do it, but I'm not doing it more. Not, they're not doing it. They're not they're keeping it. Well, okay, the coaching process there is motivating. You can, you got to motivate them to get back on, on to, to doing it real well. And, and the fourth one is you're, you, you are doing it. And the fourth coaching process is confirming. And confirming normally means uh, we're, uh, uh, deserved praise. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so let's, let's, let's take a, 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 a practical a home area that all, everybody, I think parents would really like for their kids to take care of, of, of either chores or, or their, their room or things like that, like making your bed, okay? Uh, at some point, uh, you, a child gets, gets old enough to where they're supposed to make their own bed, Right. So, so you need to tell them that, well, from now on, you need to make your bed. Well, they're an R1. You need to tell them what to do. And, and, but they don't know how to do it, so, so I quickly go to R2. Now, you need to teach them how to make up the bed and what your standards are and make sure that they understand what the standards uh, that, you, that you're demanding are. Uh, and then, and then uh, let's, let's say time goes by and, 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 um, and, and they're no longer making their bed. Well, now you, now you go to, uh, to motivation. Well, parents have a, a, 
a large number of ways to motivate their children. Okay. Uh, it could be something as mild as, uh, I noticed that you're, that you're not making your bed anymore. Would you, uh, I would like it better if you made your bed and, and you know, reminding them that they need to do it, okay, uh, to uh, uh, whatever it is that they, that they want to motivate. And then, but don't forget that when they're doing it, you got a kid that's actually making his bed. You, get, you know what I like about you? You, you, you always, you always do what we tell you to do without, without us having to worry about it. You're, you, you're so good at making up that bed. You, you know, being able to praise. Don't forget to praise your, 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 your kids. That's, that's a coaching process. So, so the point of readiness factors is to make sure that that parents recognize what readiness factor their, their, their child is in. Our coaches do this, too. Re- recognize what, because I think that parents have a natural, um, there's one of those coaching process that comes natural to them. In other words, they, some parents are, are in the, I'm going to tell you what to do mode all the time. You know, it, 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 you need to make up your bed. You know, you need to make up your bed. Anybody want to, you know, you know, that maybe, maybe, they, maybe they, they don't really know how to. Right? Well, you're, you're still, you're, you're in a, you're in a, uh, in a, using an inappropriate coaching process for the task, the readiness factor that they're in, and uh, so you want to make sure that you, as a parent, are are synced up with your. Uh, with your child's readiness factor, the coaching process is synced up with the readiness factor. So, that's that's the point. So if my kid is is a readiness factor four, yep. knows what to do, able, willing to do it, and I try as a parent because I see this sometimes where their kid is in that quadrant, if you will, and then the parent is telling them what they need to do and what they need to do and what they need to do, and then it stresses the kid yep. out. Yep. They get the opposite of what they want. They get a little bit of a defiant kid because I'm already doing it. And so what would your advice be to parents who maybe they catch themselves and they realize, wow, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing this appropriately. How do they switch it? Well, Read they the need- book. <laughs> Read the book. Oh, that's right. Read, Read the, the book. book. It's in the book. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, but what we're trying to do is, is, is I think when parents recognize – that uh, I'm I'm telling them what, and and they're 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 resisting. It it could be because we did we bypassed the teaching portion. I th- I think parents say you need to make your bed. Well, if if you need to show them what your standard is to be able to to to, to make a bed, you know what. Well, what is the standard? Here, here's how you do it. Don't don't bypass the teaching the teaching point, uh, uh, teaching coaching process. Uh, so they they but when you know that they they have done it many many times and they know exactly what to do, uh, and they're and they're still not doing it. Telling them they need to do it, and and not going to the motivating coaching process is not going to do anything but just stress the kid out. Mm-hmm. So so you've got to say, hmm, well, this this coaching process isn't working. What 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 I should be, I should be motivating them. Well, how do you how do you motivate folks? Well, you motiv- primarily parents have have three w- ways to motivate. They have promise of gain, they have fear of loss, and they have recognition. So um, uh, you 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 find <laughs> find how do how do you motivate how do you motivate your children What motivates your kids? Uh, is it is it prompt? Uh, sometimes it's appropriate for promise again. You know, if you do this, you if you make your bed uh, every, every every month. You know, we get to do this. Uh, uh, you know, fear of loss. Uh, uh, you know, you, you find something that that uh, hurts a little bit. If I lose it, uh, maybe I can. Maybe I should make make up. My maybe bed. they lose their phone. Or yeah. So that explains why you only have one kid. <laughs> because if you have multiple kids, they're not motivated all the same way, and because it's more challenging as a parent. 
Well, yeah, that's right. You're right? He's right. like, why do you treat me differently? Because promise of gain works for your sister, <laughs> but fear of loss works for you. That's right. And that's not fair. You hear that all the time, too, especially when you have twins. Yeah, that, that's not fair. <laughs> and you speak fa- that's not from experience. Fair. You got or, 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 <laughs> yeah. having two boys and a girl, so, so, so we treat the girl different than the boys. That's not fair. And your parent, You know, uh, you're talking uh, through this from a parent perspective, but it's, it's reminding me of – going through basic training and watching the drill sergeants. And the really good ones did this. They they knew you didn't know why it was important and you didn't know what to do. At the beginning, you don't know anything, right? Or you think you do, you know, because you're, you know, most guys going to the basic training, 18, 19, right out of high school, and they're like, oh, I know, well, this, that, and the other. And everyone's got their own opinion, but no, you don't know. But they do a very good job of informing you. Then they teach you, and the way they teach you is really good. They teach you to where you're repetitive learning, and then when you get it, the good ones do confirm to you. They say, okay, you got that. And sometimes they're very sneaky the way they do it. They'll, they'll pull a person over, and they'll say, Landy, come here. And you go over there, and he goes, okay, I want you to show, show Heather what you just did over there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning, somebody might say, well, why am I teaching? Why did the drill start teaching them? But what he's really doing is he's saying, hey, I know you know how to do it because you just did it. And by showing him, he can relate to that more than me teaching them. It's fascinating because I'm going through my mind, okay, that's exactly the steps they took. Mm-hmm. So then by the time you get out there, you're better better prepared. That's really what you're trying to do is to arm parents and parenting champions for their athlete to be ready to go out school go to college, go in the real world to be successful. I think the biggest thing that I've learned, whether it's working with you or maybe even just having you as my father, but one of the biggest things that's that's impacted my parenting is recognizing that my job as a parent is to build the self-image of my kids. And especially when they're struggling is to find the appropriate time to share, to make sure I'm complimenting them when it's warranted to make sure that I'm focusing on solutions and not problems, that I'm not badgering them about the things that they're not doing well. I feel like I've learned a lot about how to communicate with my kids and especially Ashley. She's um, eight years younger than Austin. So I, I, I apologize to my son because I know uh, that it was a big difference that that eight years, there's a big difference in growth in me to be able to apply some of these these things. But I'm still doing that with my adult son. I'm still doing my best to try to build him whenever we're talking to make sure that they have the belief in themselves that they should. Yeah, a simple thing is to recognize if becoming is more important to you than accomplishment and the world is not going to reward becoming that you need to, while your children are still home, you need to go out of your way when they start acting like with character, uh, honesty, integrity, kindness, uh, obedience, when they do those kind of things that are supposedly important to you, more important than accomplishment, that you don't focus on accomplishment all the time, but you focus on who who they are, too. And and that's a a major portion of of self-image. And one of the ways to, to, one of the synonyms of self-image is who they become. So, so how do you build becoming in your children? You, you reward it. You praise it when it's, worth, when it's worthy. What, what irritates me uh, as, as a performance coach is when you, when you praise somebody that's not worthy, you're, that's not praise. That's not helpful praise. What you do is you cheapen praise. And uh, okay, we're going to give everybody a trophy, you know, or we're 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 not going to reward first and second, uh, third place, uh, because somebody that's in fifth place might feel might be offended. Um, well, you're you're uh, you're definitely offending first, second, and third by when when you do that. Uh, you know, the world is geared 
to to reward excellence uh, when excellence is deserved. And and so they're going to be faced in, in, in the future. You're going to do better. Uh, you'll be more successful in life if you do good work. And, and you're, you're going to be less likely to get promoted if you don't. And so the, you, you, parents need to prepare their kids for not only what they, their scores, but also the kind of things that only parents can reward, and that's character. And there are a few really good coaches out there that have seen this. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite coaches, John Wooden. And if you read John Wooden's uh, book, it's, it's, it's a powerful little book. I mean, it just talks about, he says, I'm going to build it. I'm going to build the basketball player. I'm going to build the player, and I can always teach him how to play basketball. And he says, well, you give, but give, me, give, me a, give me a player of character, a work ethic, a, uh, a, a team, team guy, uh, somebody that has empathy with other people. And he, he just worked on character. And then I, I had the, the honor to, uh, uh, to, to meet uh, uh, Larry Gilwicks, who, who, was, who was one of the, the winningest coaches ever. Uh, Larry um, uh, coached uh, high school rugby. Uh, and he, he, he coached for 20, 26 years, 25 of those years, he was, uh, his, his team was national champion, high school rugby, oh, awesome. national champion, 25 out of 26. I've never seen it, heard of anybody that, have, that, that does that well. And, and he, they made a movie about him. What, what his whole focus was, he spent his time building his athletes, and, and he, he realized that that character uh, is 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 what needs to be reinforced. It's self-image, and that's really what the book is about: is help helping parents build self, their their children's self-image so that they can handle the world uh, better and they can reach the top of their of their potential. And it's a big job for parents, and they need to know how to do it. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. I think that I speak for all parents. We would want our children to become the best versions of themselves when they're tackling their dreams. And so we appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Go ahead and like this video if you do. And subscribe to our channel. And if you're not a Patreon member, we invite you to join us. We will have more content with Lanny that is only available to our Patreon members.